If you want to play PvP on Conan Exiles, I probably don't advise official as they're kind of dead, but that's where we're at today. This is a beginner's guide on how to start out on a PvP server, but you can use it in your regular Conan PvE gameplay also. If you're super fresh to the game, a few things may go over your head a little bit, but I will do my best to explain stuff as if you were new to the game, without being too boring for my more experienced players who just want to dabble in a bit of PvP maybe for the first time, or maybe you've played PvP before and you just want to learn a few more tips and tricks from a very experienced player. If you've made your character, you want to eat the noms in this box. Usually it's in there, but I've already done that. And we're going to start off our journey steps, which give us some XP and some free goodies. Harvesting some stuff in this early game, like these stones and fibers, pretty decent XP. So we're going to do a bunch of these early journey steps as I make my way past the Noob River to a couple of little locations along the way before I make my way over this way. And I'll probably cut out a bunch of the running in between, unless something interesting interesting happens. But essentially I'm going to craft myself up some little bits of this stuff, some little bits of this stuff, just following that journey. When it comes to attribute point distribution at the moment, I usually still do go expertise with vitality because those are things that are going to help me level pretty quickly. And the aim of the game when you first start off in PvP is level as quickly as you can to access all your good knowledge things. Oh, I found they've um, fixed the thing where you can't see stuff and access inventories. I'll take your bugs, sir. I don't have anything else of interest. That sucks me. Another naked body. I might even find decayed bases. Well digressing. If you are searching for more survivors you essentially just have to get to this bit where the bat is and he's like over a little dude the guy's not really surviving and you'd think it would be further up with exiled camps are but i thought i'd just quickly add that in for any of the new players as it's a little confusing my first weapons i usually like to craft stone clubs or stone daggers <laughs> he got tired of me pretty quick um okay i'm a little rusty i've been playing other games buttons the hard man I can make skin enough and skin him. I can't because I don't have any stone. That's okay. I'll get some stone. That way I'll be that way I'll be able to craft some more water skins for my journey, some bed rolls, maybe get some meat. Poor meat. Getting absolutely wrecked by the goblins. I should um possibly try Q lock. If you're not unfamiliar, you can press Q lock and it will lock onto them. I'm just not a huge fan of using it all the time. Uh, I just gotta get used to the new fighting. Not that bad. That is the first time I really played the game since the Age of War chapter, whatever the hell we're up to now has come out. Since the new year anyway. When you see the aloe bushes about, it's a good idea to pick them up and uh, craft yourself some potions for the go, because you're gonna need them. Tens and bandages aren't gonna hurt, although ten's gonna make a fair few bandages, so you probably don't need that many. The craft's more than one per... Has it changed that too? You can hit a grub with... Not an axe. Must be a pick. No, nah, Can't get any grubs that, that way anymore. Well, just giving out false information it would seem. They'd like me to place a bedroll, which is probably a good idea considering I'm around a whole bunch of turtles that might attack me at some point. There's a couple of little places that we want to visit, like I said. You don't have to do things this way, you can mix up in the order I do do things. This is just a rough little general guide of how I do the things as a generally solo player. I'll be covering a lot of things in this series from how to level up well, which is what we'll predominantly be doing in the uh, beginning parts. Now to get good gear, how to make good use of your time, grind well, best strats for getting stuff, and um, yeah, how to raid good. I'm not the best fighter, but I can teach you some stuff regardless, and I can definitely teach you how to get into a base. There does seem to be a couple of bases about, so that'll be fun scouting. And you can use these tricks even if you're not a solo player, but they certainly come in handy if you're a solo player. If you're not and you're in a big clan, you might be thinking, why the shit is she doing this? It's because I don't have friends to give me stuff, so I have to be a bit stingy with some of my crap on occasion. Every now and then these guys will all murder each other, which is fun for us. Because we might get things. We did not really get things. And I don't have a bed roll around, so I'm going to run away. Found a thing I want to go explore. There is what's known as a blood crystal rock nose just here. And I also wish to learn the yoga religion as I run past. So I'm gonna do that. Hopefully I can find somewhere to put my bedroll around here. That'd be real convenient. 
There's nothing too much else that can get me around here, so I'm probably just gonna put it right here. That works. Good. I wanna I wanna see what their shit is. They kind of wanna touch it. I can't see whose stuff is whose anymore without a um repair hammer, which is a bit annoying. Used to be able to just press tab. Now you can't. I don't think I'll climb up there. That's a bit of a waste of my time currently, but I could always come back. While I'm waiting, I'm also going to put down my campfire and cook up my eight meat. And there's also a little bit of iron just behind that rock also that I might harvest. I'm essentially just going to make my way up to the sorcery cave first, then over here, but probably come back down this way and make my way past Sinner's Refuge first. It depends on what type of tool I get because I might want to get some easy brimstone. I'm not sure yet. A lot of my decisions really do matter what happens, like the RNG of my game. I usually like to salt heaviest first so I can drop some stuff when I have to. You can hit these trees for a bunch of dry wood and bark. If you hit them with an axe, you're going to get a whole bunch of sticks and dry wood. I prefer the bark and dry wood. You're probably not going to see me build any form of hut in the foreseeable future, just so you'll know also. This little guy should just be up here if he hasn't been slon already. Nope, there he is. You gonna know about my guy? Hello, I wish to fight you. No? Weird. Can't even say that I'm in creative mode because fucking official. Now he's pretty slow and usually I just try to avoid him. I am going to get some pretty bad ping. I am playing on US servers because it's better than Australia servers. Well, I'm going to try anyway. Probably not worth my diamond effort to be fair. It'll be decent XP, but black crystals are wildly less useful than what they were. But uh, they're still somewhat useful. If I had a better tool, I would get better stuff, but I don't, so I got 20. Harvesting a bunch of these will give you decent-ish levels also, so I've already gained an extra two or three levels since I began here. You just drop the stuff you don't want. And just here we'll learn the Yog religion, and if you're feeling spicy, there's also a crystal cave with a couple of little gremlin dudes that were fighting earlier in it that you can get some levels in. I'll probably forgo it for the moment. Might as well, and that way I can slay some dudes. Very poorly. If you don't have a meat cleaver, usually you can get meat with an axe. It's that Q lock. Again, obviously the better the tool you get, the better you're gonna harvest and the more XP you'll get. But you can also handpick these guys if you don't have a tool. Get a little bit of XP. And crystal is very useful for making bombs and a whole bunch of other stuff. Map rooms, glass. Not that you should be doing that, you should be buying your glass, but that's for another time. Some sorcery things. It's just a really handy thing anyway. And also having efficient harvest is gonna help you immensely with the hitting resources for leveling because you'll get twice as many and then if you happen to have a hard worker you do it twice as quickly and you can carry more. I usually use bandages when I'm outside of battle because they're shit to use in battle do not use them in battle can't really roll out of it and they take a lot longer but they are much cheaper to craft hence using them outside of battle. Hello potions inside of battle. Roll my noobs out there. There is also a one skull boss in here that you can fight but you're probably going to want to avoid him as it will probably take a long time so I'm just going to dip from here. I got my levels I want. I'm gonna repair some of my stuff. Oh, need some stone. Likely story. You can gather some stone with an axe, but you do gather more with a pick. If you haven't happened to get any meats, you can put grass and seeds or fiber and seeds, what's it called? Plant fiber and seeds in a campfire and make gruel. Handy for your thralls for leveling strength. You can also tame them with it in the thrall world, although I prefer to use roasted mushrooms. It's much cheaper and it lasts a lot longer, again, for a later time. But it's a handy snack to have in your pocket as it gives you food and water also. And you're not going to care if you lose it. And I'm just going to place a little bit of a furnace here just for a second to craft down a few little iron bars. I put in the full slot. This sneaky little base almost had me for a second. That was crazy. Very blendy. Just sketchily fighting alligators without a bedroll in sight. I even have my skinning knife equip. I'll probably drop its crud. If you drop anything good, I'll take her crud. Usually you can find some dudes up here that have killed each other with his crud. And you might get some ichor off these guys. You might just get a whole bunch of chitin. Oh, let's drop that and that. Not sure why these guys are wigging out so hard, but I'll take it. 
Now I've made my way near to the sorcery cave, I'm going to place another bedroll, which will place over my other bedroll. Unless you have a bed, it will be one spawn point. But there's also another little camp over there with a bear and some other fun stuff. If you're feeling spicy, you might get some strength armor. I might give it a go. You can kite them into fighting the alligators. Yeah, let's try that. Hey, buddy. Hey, other buddy. You're a little bit stronger than your old exile. And then you can get some hits in and potentially get some XP. Potentially die. We'll be okay unless that archer comes around. There's also some, some boxes in there that you can touch if you're kind of sneaky. Oh, shouldn't drop much good. If you are newer to the game, these dudes with the backpacks on their heads are the bearers. They drop certain goodies in their backpacks as well as sometimes their backpacks themselves. If you tame them, you can get their backpacks. Whoa. And that's not going to work out well for me. They're going to have to return home. And uh, sometimes, well, they might actually come down and fight me. You can tame them and they have lots of inventory space depending on their tier. I have a separate video on bearers, although some of that stuff's changed now. As higher level area bearers are actually going to be better. I have buckle agility, which would help me with um, my daggers. But they may even bleed out like so. Oh no, I'm over encumbered. I advise not opening up those backpacks until you get somewhere safe because they're usually full of a lot of heavy resources. Now those guys are dead. You can also skin them for some hide. I'll check in their box. There's nothing I wildly want, but if you loot it all and you happen to be in the area and you come back, it'll uh, refresh. I'm probably not going to mess with the rest of these guys. I could get good armor, but I could also just like get marked and find it hard to get my stuff back. Maybe I'll kill this one guy. I might get lucky and get a piece of armor. Oh, look out. That's why we try sometimes. Then I can put that on and if I had a repair bench, I could repair it. Repair bench being an armorer's bench. There's no repair benches, particularly in this game. Repair will, but it doesn't really work very well anymore. But now we get to the real reason why we were over here. To come to the sorcery cave. There are some demonic turtles in here. Don't have to fight them. You can just run past them. Maybe they're not going to be up the front. Usually they are. How weird. Sometimes they spawn up into the unnamed city. It's not that weird. Sound surprised. I'm not. The game does have its fair share of bugs. And imagine why the servers are so dead. Touch this, you can get a book, learn some spells, and get some sorcery bits. But you will be gaining corruption the whole time in here. I like to jump in the water, climb up the waterfall. You can cast your bridge across if you so desire. But this is free. You can find some pretty good stuff in here. Gold and silver. Some better weapons than what I had and better tools. Way better weapons. I need to drop some stuff. Whoa. I got some pretty decent stuff, but I might stick around for another respawn. You don't have to. You can just run off to the next spot. I just went ahead and did a quick little few journey steps. Mostly so I could get this guy. It's a bit of bigger storage. I know I said I wasn't going to build a hut. This is a little different. This is just a place where I'm storing some shit for a minute. Don't forget to lock your boxes. Simply hold E on all your equipment equivalent and lock and unlock boss. I'm just running myself over to this sinkhole with a whole bunch of stuff that I don't care if I die with because I might die. Actually, I'm definitely going to die. I'm going to respawn back over there and hopefully by then the boxes have respawned, but I've utilized my time well. As I need to do a little bit of scouting, touching of these recipes and getting up the obelisks anyway, I might as well do it now and just spawn back in my bed where I am. Um, I've put it back over there. So just waiting around. Looks like we've got some private map rooms going on. Or we'll throw wheels. Probably throw wheels, to be fair. Um, nope, just taming huts. Interesting. <clears throat> Looks like this bad boy got blown into. The kids. Apparently. Nothing good. Just about here for a bedroll. I'm probably going to die running in here. I don't want to run all the way back. Because there is a recipe in here that will give us salted pork, which is a strength buff. These guys all suck though. Whoa, excuse you, sir. And they will try and gank me. Hence them maybe not living past, yeah, part. We shall see. 
Girls are pretty stupid for the most part. And then so am I. There's some boxes you can touch for loot, but as I can't actually leave with any of the loot, I, whoa, don't so much care. Leave again. Boopity boop. I actually came out of there rather unscathed compared to what I thought was going to happen, so that's nice. Onward to the obelisk. As Cole's pretty decent levels, I'm actually going to hit a bunch of it. At this low level, it's decent XP anywho. This gives me a little bit of hope there might actually be some people on the server. At one point, I did say it was six people, but then that quickly dropped off. No, not at all. And you grab over there. Good. Oh, fancy. This is the fanciest elevator down to the dragon pit I've ever seen. Just saying. And there's an emote here. I have a whole series that goes into all a bunch of these emote journals. A whole bunch of crazy stories to be had. Freebies. Fucking love freebies. There's nothing. Sick. Ain't nothing freebies. There's a death hole. There's some honey. I might actually live out of this too, so... I can come and use some benches here, that's something, providing this all doesn't decay soon, as I don't have my repair, my construction hammer, I can't actually see. I love the literal pyramid. I unfortunately missed the pyramid DLC, so hopefully I can get that at some point, because I do like it as a building structure. I really want to aggro everything. Oh, wish there was a single free thing. There's some free shit shirts. More nothings. Oh, these guys are gonna get me. No, my bed rolls slightly too far away for me to bother. Some type of arena. Oh, that's lovely. I didn't even notice my, my corruption was getting healed. Oh, oh no, that's annoying. Can he not follow me down? Thank you. Never seen that before. Anyway, usually there's an elevator down to the pit. Do you want to avoid the dragon and touch this tablet? I might still not live out of here. We shall see. There's a bunch of fun boxes you can also touch in here. I'm probably not going to bother. Like I said, I'm not planning on living. And there's also a whole lot of skeletons. And with my lag, let's see what we can get in some of these boxes. I mean, that's actually pretty decent. No, take all, man. And then avoid the skeleton. Upwards we go. I might have to go back down to go up the elevator anyway. God damn. Just hang up here for a moment and lose their aggro. And we go to the elevator and hope to god the, the dragon does not notice us. Interact. Well, the skeletons come. Okay, he didn't notice us. Good, because he can mess us up quite a lot. Well, that's a bit more like it. Um, to be fair, it's still kind of meh. Take the short sword and that. I seems like it could be a little bit handy. No armor, of course. It's still much better than I was anticipating. Now I have to go and actually make sure I touch that obelisk because I was running past a whole lot of stuff. Just simply boop the obelisk. And we're gonna run away again. Did I happen to get a pick? I did. Good. I actually dropped the shirt pick. Now I should have mentioned at the time when I was sneaking the people's stuff, if it wasn't someone who was like, free things at my arena, I maybe would have questioned it slightly more as it does generally put a target on one's thing. Look at this salt. I don't like not being able to see timer. Now I have the stuff I want. I'm going to leave this place. I'm going to leave some random spare stuff in there just in case I do fall into a pit of no return. Lack of a better term. But now I'm going to make my way through the unnamed city, touch a couple boxes in there, get the obelisk, learn map runes, and make my way up towards the Metro Oasis where we can get some more fun stuff and get a little camel mount underway. Because I didn't explain it very good at the time, I went to go get the armor at the sinkhole. There's a bunch of cool stuff you can get around here. We might even dip and try and get some of the fragments of power that are lurking about rather than running straight to the place. I can always come back at some other point. But these are usually here and they're pretty easy to get so I might as well. Never know when those first few recipes that you get will come in handy. 
I have a whole bunch of different recipe guides, but a fairly new one that's just come out that has all the list of the order that you get them in now because it is no longer random, it is authorized. If you're feeling spicy, you can also try and take out the Relic Hunters and you may even get some Legion armor off the One Skull guy, but he'll probably wreck you, so I'm not gonna bother with him today. If it has some arrows, maybe. They do tend to return home just, just too frequently, it's kind of poo. It does look like there's some pretty decent stuff to be raided on this server so far, which is good. Usually in here, yeah, it says press E to interact, which indicates that it's here. You can also use a skinning knife and the rock will just disappear if there's not too much lag, which usually there isn't. Maybe that doesn't work anymore. We'll just try and use a pick. We'll just drop the rock. This base is um, making a little smidge laggy. I'd love to see whose it is, but I also don't care enough right now. But it could also be almost decayed. I have my hammer. Oh, such a mission though. Yeah, I don't care enough. <laughs> I definitely picked the craziest way to come through the unnamed city as a naked, very low level person. You can mess with the Red Mother and go get her boxes behind her. Eh, there's also a snake with boxes. Might even be a box up here. This one could be worth checking out. Excuse you, sir. No. Rude. And it was worth the climb. We climbed up the statue. I find that the easiest. Get up, that little dude. This place is like super corrupt either. And I cannot see far enough to see whether that statue has stuff on it. Let's jump down and try not to die. With lag, that's always a little bit hard. Where we started. This one over here happens to be here. You know what the skeleton's about. I'm gonna try to avoid them. I couldn't climb up the tower over there. It was a little bit too high for me. There's a box I want to check under here. Fairly easy to get to if they won't aggro too much stuff. And you can certainly run straight to leveling. This is just gonna save me to some time later. Got a few things. Whoa! And then you just gotta try and not get clusterfucked in these guys. Just keep... Uh, I guess we're running back because fun come. Particularly annoying because I couldn't roll away and I couldn't like attack, so at least my body shouldn't be too hard to get back in theory. I'm just gotta run back under the bridge. Now with my precious few fragments, I dodge all the skeletons and try and make my way into the archivist's office. There's another box I could get some stuff in there, but a thing as no, not right now. Sometimes I risk it for the biscuit, other times I just cannot be bothered. If the biscuit crumbles, uh, no, don't want it. Don't forget to touch the obelisk on your way past. There's also another bus little box up here that I might try to touch as that's kind of worthy. Boop. I'm glad we found those other dancers earlier because that helped my corruption. Seeing as these other boxes have been here, there's a strong possibility that this one gonna be. There's more that I could get of, could have gotten, but I don't really feel like the climb. Let me up. This temple's particularly sucky. Advise hiding, holding the climb button. Yay! As they're on a random respawn, they don't necessarily respawn as the server does. They'll start respawning on a random timer, essentially. And then we run behind the obelisk into the archivist's office. Still avoiding all of the skeletons and gaining lots of corruption, so you don't want to lurk around here too long. The more corrupted you are, the more sorcery you can use, but we don't have any of that leveled up currently, so we don't need to worry about that. We will dip into some of that in some future episodes, as well as the purge system. I'd fancy getting myself some easy thralls that way and a bunch of the other stuff that you can enjoy in this game. So if you've enjoyed this episode and you're not already, consider subscribing and smash that like button if you found it entertaining. It means a bunch. And join me for the next episode as I make my way out of this hellhole and over towards the oasis, gain myself a little bit of a legendary weapon, a camel or two, and then I'm gonna go level up some more. But first, talk to this guy, learn cartographer. You can learn memory of oils. I'm not going to right now. We're gonna touch this. We get ourselves some scrolls and we're going to eat those scrolls straight away. You no longer need the fragments to craft most of them, that's not one you can eat. So you don't need to worry about reserving them. 
And uh, yeah, until next time, I hope you have an excellent day, evening, night, morning, whatever it may be, wherever you may be. Have a good one.